Hello! Welcome to Squid Essays. Inking your academic pen. My name is Julie and I will be your instructor as we read through educational philosophy statement. The article source is embedded in the video description below. Feel free to read along. Please note that you can get a custom, plagiarism-free essay for as little as $10 a page at Squid Essays. The link is in the description. The role of teacher can be hardly underestimated in the process of education. It is obvious that teachers play an important role in the learning process and shaping of students' personality and their cultural identity. In fact, teachers possess certain authority and it is extremely important that they use this authority effectively and contribute it to the balanced development of students. To achieve this goal teachers need to develop their own educational philosophy that would help them not only to teach but, what is more important, to learn. First of all, it should be pointed out that teachers' philosophy may be shaped under the impact of different factors but it is possible to distinguish two of the most important constituent elements of their philosophy. On the one hand, it is the actions of teachers, their behavior that can really define their philosophy since they have certain models of behavior, habits that they often cannot change but which sometimes they should change in order to develop a really effective educational philosophy. In such situations it is very important to take into consideration another important factor, namely what teachers think about their actions because it is the reflection on their actions can change not only teachers' behavior but their educational philosophy at large. Obviously, they should be very critical in the analysis of their actions and attempt to assess them as objectively as possible in order to choose the right direction in the development of their educational philosophy. In such a way, teachers, being able to impact on students by their behavior and ideas, should develop their educational philosophy on the basis of these essential elements. Basically, it is necessary to underline that there are two possible ways to the development of educational philosophies. First of all, it is possible to develop the educational philosophy during the action. It means that a teacher can reflect on his her behavior while he she is performing some action and analyze it immediately. For instance, a teacher can scan the situation in the classroom during the lesson by questioning students in order to find out whether the lesson or the problem discussed is interesting for them or not. On analyzing the received information, a teacher can change his her behavior or continue the lesson if it runs successfully. However, this is rather a short-term approach since it provides an opportunity to learn only the current situation and analyze the current behavior of teachers and assess whether it is effective or not, right or wrong. At the same time, it does not provide the opportunity to analyze the situation in depth and, consequently, it is practically impossible to fully understand the reaction of students on teachers' behavior and often it is quite difficult to choose the most effective ways of behavior immediately. In such situations, another strategy of the development of educational philosophy may be quite effective. What is meant here is the development of teachers' educational philosophy on the basis of the analysis of their past actions. Unlike the previous approach, this one implies that teachers do not analyze the present situation in the classroom, for instance, but, instead, attempt to objectively evaluate their past actions and behavior. They take into consideration what they did and whether it was right or not, or probably there could be better ways of acting in the given situation. On analyzing their past behavior, teachers get an excellent opportunity to have a larger view on their work and behavior and objectively and more profoundly analyze it. This will naturally open opportunities for the development of the long-term strategies and the analysis of the general effectiveness of educational philosophy in the long run. Obviously, both approaches could be quite effective in the development of educational philosophy but the real professional teacher would rather apply both of them than focus on one approach only. In fact, such a combination is simply essential since it is important that the teacher could change and improve his her behavior immediately in the concrete situation depending on the circumstances but he she also needs to be able to make a profound strategic analysis of his her actions in order to reveal more profound details that can remain unnoticed on a brief analysis during a lesson, for instance. Nevertheless, it is possible to conclude that, Regardless the approaches teachers use in the development of their educational philosophy, it is necessary to remember that they are responsible for their students and not only at the present moment but for their further life as well because consciously or not students learn from teachers and gradually are influenced by their behavior, 
actions, thoughts, ideas and philosophy at large. Bibliography 1. What shapes teachers' personal philosophy in education? Thank you for taking your time to listen to me. I hope you enjoyed learning about educational philosophy statement as much as I did. Kindly remember that you can get a custom, plagiarism free essay at Squid Essays for as little as little as $10. The link is in the description. See you next time.